Welcome back. So glad you could join me for this, the final episode of the Bath Vanity Project. And in this video, I'm going to be making the drawer boxes for the vanity. Now, with a project like this with just a few drawers, I might normally make a relatively simple joint or I might even hand cut dovetails in the corners of the drawer boxes. But I've got a project coming up pretty soon where I've got to make some 65 dovetailed drawer boxes. That's a lot of dovetails to cut. So I decided to finally break down and purchase a Lee D4R Pro dovetail jig. So in this video, we're gonna kinda learn together how to use that jig and see how it works. Now what I've done so far is I've taken some soft maple and I've resawed it and I've milled it to one half inch thickness and I've got a bunch of boards here. Now I need to rip these to width and cut them to length for all of my drawer parts. Now there are a few that I'm gonna have to glue up to make them wider for some deep drawers. And then there's some that I'm just gonna be doing some rip cuts. I'm gonna go ahead and get all that done and then we'll jump right in to using this Lee jig and see if we can make good dovetail joints on it. So let's get going. I've got all my drawer stock cut out and ready to go. I sort of stood everything up here, used a little blue painter's tape to keep it together, and I really just wanted to look at the grain patterns and make sure I had everything like I wanted it. I also cut a little bit of test stock. Now it's time to set up the Lee dovetail jig. Now this requires just a little bit of assembly so let's take a look at that. The initial assembly of the Lee jig is pretty straightforward and the instructions are quite clear. The first step is to make a mounting board. You want to be able to clamp the jig down to your work surface so it doesn't move while you're using it. Now the whole spacing for the mounting is lined out in the instruction manual quite clear and they provide the nuts and bolts for that job. Once that's done, all you need to do is attach the supports for the guide fingers. Then the rules are attached to the guide finger assembly and the whole thing slides on and can be locked down. After that's done, the clamps get attached and you're pretty much ready to go. You'll need to make a spacer board. The dimensions for that are outlined in the instructions. And if you purchased the VRS, the vacuum router support, you'll need to attach two more brackets for that support mechanism. Very straightforward, very easy. Now, the next step is to start setting it up. So why don't you come around, look over my shoulder, and we'll see if we can get this set up to cut some through dovetails. The Lee dovetail jig is interesting in the fact that it is set up the pins first, cut the tails, then cut the pins. Now, if you hand cut dovetails, you may be a tails first person. I happen to be a pins first person. I've always cut the pins first. So actually, this is kind of easy for me to remember, but if you're a tails first person, just remember, set up pins first, cut tails first. So the first step is to get your test board. Obviously you want it the same thickness and same width as your workpiece. And you want to slide that vertically in under the clamp up against the stop on the left hand side and up touching the fingers at the top. Then you can loosen and raise this just a smidge, an eighth of an inch or so. And then that just allows the fingers to move and then using this square drive screwdriver provided by Lee with the jig you can adjust your fingers and what you're setting 
is the look of the pins on the end of the board. Now obviously you want half pins out here and then you can arrange the pins kind of any way you want to because that's going to set how the tails are cut automatically. Once you get that locked into place exactly the way you want it, then all you really need to do is take the finger guide assembly. You may have to remove your VRS. It might get in the way to removing that. Remove the guide finger assembly and flip it over. And when you flip that over, the book will tell you where to set it, but I'll just give you a hint. For these, we set the line that's called less than or equal to one inch and set that on here and tighten the finger guide assembly. Once that's done, you're basically ready to cut. Now, you're going to come in with the router and basically make climb cuts all the way around. So you're going to cut here, then down through here, through here, through here, and then when you come down here, you're going to cut this off and your tails will be cut in your board. Now, the board, you want the inside facing away from the uh, jig have the inside of the board facing you. If you got that all set, you're ready to make a cut. All right, now the last step in getting set up is to take a piece of your test material, same thickness, and put it in here up flush to the fingers and draw a faint pencil line along your workpiece. And we're going to use that to set the depth when we install the dovetail bit in the router. Adjust the uh, router depth so that the bit, the bottom of the bit is exactly even with that pencil line and you're good to go. And there we go. Okay, setting up now to route the pins, we've done the tails. So now what we do is we take the finger assembly and flip it over to the through dovetail pin side. Then take a test board and push it up flush to the pins. Use another piece of test board and mark a line, which is the thickness of the wood use that line to set the depth of the bit. And for this we're using a straight bit installed in the router. And we're pretty much ready to go. Now I've been using the VRS because it helps support the router. So I'm going to put that on. It makes it a little harder for you to see, but it does help support the router quite a bit. So let's give this a try.
That looks pretty good. Let's see how it fits. It's a firm push to fit, but uh, still enough room for some glue and there's no visible gaps. I'm pretty happy with that. Now in this mode, <clears throat> the outside of the board is facing out. So, let's just go ahead and caution to the wind. Let's cut a real piece and let's see how it works. Well, here we go. Straight out of the machine. This looks <laughs> pretty good. The joint's pretty tight. The spacing looks good. The top is level up here. There's a little fuzziness, but I can easily sand that off. For machine-made dovetails, I'm pretty happy. Well, here we go. I think I'm done now. I think I've got all the drawers done. One of the things I learned early on was that putting a strip of blue painter's tape along the cut line really cuts down on the amount of splintering and tear out that you get. Um, this board's worked just a little bit, but the clamp held it in tight on the jig, and when I push it in, it fits absolutely perfect. So. I think we're going to be in a good shape when we glue this up. Wow, that was a lot of fun. Love learning how to use a new tool. Now I'm going to make the bottoms for these drawers. and Of course, I'll have to cut the groove in the sides for those bottoms. And then I'll glue these drawers up, put a little finish on them. But you've seen all that before in my videos. Eventually, I'll attach the drawer slides and put on the decorative drawer fronts, and this project will be done. Now, if you would like to see how I install drawer slides, there's a good tutorial available. It's called, appropriately, How to Install Drawer Slides, and you can find it right here on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description box below. Also, if you want to see another good video on how to install drawer slides, part six of the shop desk workbench clutter catcher project does a good job of showing that. It's right here on YouTube as well. And you can see another similar and also very easy way to install drawer slides in part 6a of my saw stop outfeed table build series. And by the way, part 6A of the outfeed table project also has a good section on how to install the decorative drawer fronts. So why am I directing you to those videos? Well, because this is the last video in the Bath Vanity series. I'm wrapping up this project for now so that I can work on another series of videos. Now, I'll be back in about a month with a brand new series of videos and a few changes. I hope you like what you see and hear, and I hope you'll keep on watching. As always, thank you so much for your support and for all of your kind comments. See you real soon. Oh, I guess you want to see what the finished bath vanity looks like. Well, sorry. You're just going to have to wait until next month, but it'll be worth the wait. I promise. <music> <laughs>